Hey guys, so if there's one thing winter calls for, it's snow, and that's why in this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to make realistic snow in Blender. First off, we'll design a geometry nodes powered snow generator that will work on any object. Then we'll make a node group that can be added to any material to make it snowy. Finally, we will make falling snow using particles. And also before we get started, I wanted to apologize for not having uploaded a video in more than half a year. So yeah, sorry about that. But anyways, let's get into the tutorial. So first off, I'll be talking about how to make the geometry nodes dynamic snow. So this is special because most tutorials on how to make snow in Blender essentially delete all the faces below a certain normal, then extrude them and smooth them to create the snow. But that is not dynamic and you're gonna get geometry clipping and it's honestly gonna look like crap. So I have a much better technique for this tutorial. So we are going to scatter points over every surface above a certain normal threshold. These points will then be converted to volume. Then the volume is converted to mesh. We apply our snow material and then we have our snow. So this approach is much more dynamic and the snow is more realistic. It will fuse with itself. Um, it will look really good. So here's how to make it. So head into Blender and load in your model. Then in the Geometry Nodes workspace, create a new node group and let's name it Snow. Now we're going to add a distribute point on Faces node and we're going to plug it in there. Then change the distribution method from random to Poisson disk. This gives us a lot more control and depending on the size of your model, you might want to turn up the density max. So for this size of model, I'm going to turn it up to around 100. But if you had a larger model, you might want to do less. If you had a smaller model, you might want to do more. So it's really based on size and you can get a feel for this once we've made our snow. Okay, so now we are going to add a normal node. So this will essentially give us the orientation of the face. So it will give us X, Y, and Z, but we only want the Z component from that. So let's grab a separate X, Y, and Z. Purple is vector, which means that it has both X, Y, and Z um, coordinates. So now for the Z, we can plug it directly into the density factor. And you see it's changed slightly, but you can't really see it yet. So let's add a math node. So the math node allows you to change the value of how many extra points there are. So past a certain threshold when you subtract them, you can actually see that the points are only scattered on vertical facing um, uh, faces. So then these points can be converted into a cloud and then the cloud can be converted into mesh. So here's how it works. So we are gonna take a points to volume node points to volume and now you can see this will be our snow so since our model doesn't isn't that big we are going to turn up the point density to a thousand which will just give us more realistic snow now i'll take now we will take volume to mesh in here and look we've actually got our snow here so let's now we'll, we will add a join geometry node so that we can connect our geometry or our original geometry in so that the snow will be on top of it and check that out. So right now it looks really crappy in almost every way. <laughs> to fix that, we are going to start by turning up the voxel amount. I'm going to do 128, but we might want to do more later. So you can also turn down the radius. So this is the radius that each point will be in volume. It's kind of hard to understand. Um, we will also turn up that adaptivity a bit. I might even turn this to two, something like 256 for more resolution. Now I'm going to do something kind of new. We're going to make another math node. We're going to set it to multiply and then we'll set this to a thousand. Then we're going to plug this right in here. And then we'll plug the output of the multiply down into the density max. So here's how it works. When you plug one of these values into any node, it will create a new socket here with the name of the value. So you can control the point density with this. So I'm going to turn it to two. So we will have two, a point density of 2000 now, since we're multiplying this by a thousand. So you can see it looks like this. So now we're starting to run into trouble with our model not being high enough poly, but that's okay. I'm just going to subdivide it and then I'm going to turn up the smoothness. And you don't have to do this if you have a decent, a model with a decent polygon count, but 
it's it's just general practice um so now we are going to turn down the radius until we get a moderate amount of snow and we are also going to plug the add node its other socket into this so now we can control the percentage of faces covered in snow so this at some point starts to get a bit laggy so that's why you can change the voxel amount so now i'm just going to plug in the voxel amount in here and then i'm also going to plug in the radius i'm also going to plug in the adaptivity because the adaptivity controls basically how high poly it is it, um, it gets rid of unnecessary vertices so now you can see we actually have some realistic ish snow quick timeout we need to make a snow material that we will be using for all the snow in the rest of this tutorial so let's just make it real quick select your object make a new material name it snow now add a noise texture plug it into the normal then to make it look not weird anymore plug in a bump node plug the factor of the noise texture into the height you have a snow like thing now and now turn up the detail let's set this the distance to 0 0.75 the strength to 0 0.75 now we have a reasonable snow material turn up the roughness and you're done okay time out over now that we've created our geometry nodes snow we need to give it our material that we just made so go ahead and load in a set material node drag it in right after the volume to mesh then set the material to snow and it, it will have the snow material now but since it still will look weird we need to also add a set shade smooth node so that it looks smooth and not low poly of course by turning up the voxel amount you can make it look somewhat smoother but the shade smooth is really important for it to look good okay so now let's move on to our next snow technique shader snow node group thing all right so let's create our snow node group now so first off add a mix shader and put it after your principal bsdf or whatever your model has in your material now we're going to add an, a, a geometry node it's not geometry node it's a, it's a geometry shader node okay so we are going to add a, another separate xyz so we're basically doing the same thing that we did in our geometry nodes generator we're just doing it with shaders and it's going to be more efficient um but it's not going to look quite as great it's going to be much better for some things not as great for others and it works it plays really well with our other snow shader so let's go ahead and add a diffuse bsdf um or you could copy over your other snow shader it doesn't really matter and put it in here we're just going to use fuse for now i found that that works out well enough and then we're also just going to add a bump node we're going to add a noise texture and we're just doing the same thing that we did um earlier just with uh, the fuse um bsdf you could also use principled it doesn't really matter whatever works really um so it's just it, i mean i found that this just works okay so yeah so now we have some snow it doesn't need to be any fancier than this but you can make it fancier if you want um so let's turn up the roughness slightly that just gives it a bit more realistic of a feel okay so now you can see it kind of works but not really so we're just going to add a color ramp i tried to i used to try to avoid these now i kind of figure out i figured out that use them where it makes sense but not anywhere else so you can see the position is plugged in to the vector and that's why it's not working so you're gonna have to plug in the normal and the normal is essentially giving us our normal and that's so now it looks amazing so ish so you can drag these around until you get a realistic looking snow but um you're not gonna get really realistic snow on some models and uh, but on some models it will also look great so you kind of have to figure out what works um low poly tends to be worse for this even with shade smooth enabled um it still doesn't look the best but it does look pretty good and i'm actually pretty happy with this so i'm gonna keep it like this now select all of the new nodes you've created and hit Control g then press tab to go out there all of your newly made node group and name it snow now oh this is snow zero zero one of must have made it already so now on any object you have or any material just go into your add menu 
and get into group and then select your snow and you can put it anywhere and it will add snow to your model and like i said it plays well with our other snow because it fills in the gaps that the voxel um kind of snow can't so overall that's are two snow ground shaders that will go on anything. So the next snow we're going to be making is falling snow using particles. So this one is going to be really great. Yay, let's get into it. Okay, so we're going to add a plane. This will be our emitter. Let's just scale it up slightly, go into the particle settings and add an emitter. And you can see, look, it's already snowing. So there are a few things you're going to want to do. First, I'm going to make it slightly bigger. I'm going to set the number to 10,000, which you might want to change this depending on your scene, but I feel like this works pretty well. And since the lifetime is 50, they go for about 50 frames until they die. So it actually essentially controls how far they'll go. So say I turn up the lifetime, they'll go further down. So I'm going to keep it at 50 right now because that's a good height. And the fewer there are, the better performance you will have. So then we're going to make our snowflake, which doesn't have to be anything too complex. Just an ecosphere with one subdivision and that tends to work pretty well. Now in the particle settings, we're going to go over to render and then render as object. Then select your ecosphere. And then you can see we have a bunch of these tiny ecospheres falling. So let's shade it smooth and that will just make them look slightly better. So... The next thing we're going to do is, it's obvious that snow doesn't fall down this fast. So we are going to go to velocity, no, not velocity, physics, yeah, physics. Then we're going to turn up the drag and the damp. The damp is what you really have to look for. And then you will want to turn up your lifetime if they go really slowly. So I'm just saying the lifetime is something like 10,000. You can set it to any number as long as it's pretty big. Um, so yeah, so now you have some snow and you can change the damp depending on how fast you want them to go. I used to think the drag in did stuff. It doesn't really. If you want them to swirl a bit, you can actually take a force field and do something like a turbulence. And um, over in the physics settings, you can turn up the strength. And now you get this really beautiful um, snowflake like effect where um y'all swirl and come together and fall apart it's not terribly realistic depending on your size and strength and stuff i feel like it does work pretty well for some uh, scenarios okay so on your ecosphere if you really want you can like set it to your snow material then and then they'll look like oh these look stupid um <laughs> they will look okay-ish um but yeah um you might also want to scale them down a bit or else they will look really unrealistic. But yeah, so those are our snow techniques. I hope you found these techniques useful. If you did, let me know in the comments. If you're having trouble, also let me know in the comments. And one more thing, thank you so much. We are almost at a thousand subscribers, so I really appreciate that. So yeah, thanks for watching and have a good day.